Craig will look at the blue bot after. So if you have a blue bot, it does similar things like Kevin has the, the blue blocks transparent so the kids can actually see the stuff inside which is really cool and it does allow you to do a few other things that Craig will show us so I'll show you the app that comes with the bbot I have to do this in real can see the blue bot beside it uh, so there's the app and we have links and resources for all this stuff if you're on your Nexus tablets or if you're on your iPad we'll provide links at the end for you to be able to get that I'll open it up and there you go. So it's, it's an added feature. You, it gets the students both on the device, right, on, on the BlueBot or the BeeBot, um, and on the iPad at the same time. So I will turn it on and pair it. We'll do everything that I tell it to do from the iPad. So it's a, a remote possibility of programming. So it's connected by, by Bluetooth. I'll turn this on. In the app, I'll go to start. I've already named my BlueBot. You can see BlueBot learn Quebec number one, I will connect. It's a pretty quick process the, the light just flashed and I'm connected, I will say go. And then you can see up here in the app, I'm actually connected by Bluetooth. So this is all, all set up. So let's look at the interface quickly. The controller mode, this one, I won't go into and show you, but that's just um, a remote control. So it's not so much programming. If you wanna move the blue bot around you can uh, press forward and it'll go forward automatically. So not so much programming uh, as much as a remote control. And so it might be a good opportunity to talk about how that's not really robotics at that point. You're just moving something around. Explore mode, this one, um, I'll open that one up. We'll go in there to see what the possibilities are. So there's a few things going on. There's a step-by-step. -step. So you can build your way through better programming skills and coding. So step-by-step, as I press a command, the blue bot will do it immediately. There's no delay. I don't have to press go. Right? So it's a one layer up from the remote control one. And then the basic programming, I do need the go button. So I'm going to press go forward, go right, go forward again. Then I have to press go for it to actually take place. Um, and maybe I'll show you that one, but I'll come back to it. The repeats is a loop feature, very important in coding, right? So that we don't have to code over and over and over again. We can have it execute four times or five times or six times by using loops, a series of commands. And a neat added feature is this 45 degree turn, which is not on the B-Bot or the blue bot. So if you wanna get into different angles, instead of a full 90 degree turn, um, you can do 45 degree turns as well. And maybe we'll look at that quickly. But let me go into uh, the basic programming just to give you a sense of what it looks like. And you get to choose your background, right? What kind of surface you're going to have. And I'm going to use the alphabet one just because I have that mat already. Because remember, the blue bot's going to do real, real time on the floor what you're programming on, on the iPad. So you, you, you can create the tiles accordingly, um, or you could purchase these if you, you wish, but it's, it's kind of fun to create them also. So I'll just choose the alphabet. There you go. You can see the interface a little bit. Um, you can see the blue bot is in the nest right here, I guess. Do bots live in nests? I'm not sure. Um, so I could place it on the mat where I want to begin, or I can call it back to the base. And there you go. And so I can do a little program. So let's say my name is Sam, Samantha, I want to get to the letter S, so I'll place the B-Bot, and I'm going to need to write a program that goes forward, forward, turn left, and go forward again to get to S, right? And you'll see here that the commands that I put in are going to show up as I enter them. So I say forward, forward, left, and I won't do forward yet. I'll, it's not correct just yet. So you can see my tiles that are there. I will press go. So you can see it being executed on the iPad, but it would be moving also. You can hear and see the wheels of the blue bot actually working. Um, so what's really neat about the iPad, I find, is that I didn't succeed in getting to the letter S, right? If that was my intention. Um, so I need to bring it back to base, but every time I press go, it's gonna default back to the base and run it. And that's something that users with the actual device need to think about. You always have to come back to your starting point with the blue bot, right? Or the, the B bot, very important to have a starting place. And that's something you'll talk to the students about just like it did in the app. 
Um, so I'll make my correction. The other thing is the commands are cumulative, right? And that's a huge word for a four or five year old, but they, they happen in sequence and they build on each other. So I, I missed, I fell short of the letter S, that was my example. So I need to go forward one more time. And something, I like the visual also, forward, interesting, it's not gonna go up. Forward doesn't necessarily mean in that direction because my blue bot has turned, forward is actually this way, right? So it's something to become aware of. So I will add to my tiles, right, my program. I'm missing a forward command, so I'll say forward. Now I have the full command, I say go, comes back to the beginning. runs through and then lands on the app. If you've made any errors, you can just drag your tiles back out, right? So we can go back to reprogram that kind of idea. So these are really helpful. And I think you saw when I was running the program, the cards were lighting up as it was being executed. So it's a nice visual for the learners to have, but I really like the idea of creating cards like this so that they can do this, whether they're on the B-Bot or the blue, blue bot, it won't make a difference. So I will go out of there. And let's have a look at the challenge mode. This is a little more advanced one, a little more freedom for the, the learner. I'll choose that one. Um, and I'll come back, there's so many things to show you. I can go back to the explore mode because there's other features. Um, so in the challenge mode, you can, uh, get from A to B. It's pretty simple. There's no obstacles. The obstacle one, they'll put pylons in the way. So you have to get from one place to another place, but you have to get around certain obstacles. And maybe we'll look at that after so you can see what that looks like. Um, and there's the option of fewer buttons. So I can take away, if, as an example here, they took away the left button. And so the learner would have to figure out that, well, I need to go to the left how am I going to do that? Well, I might have to make three right turns, right, to do a pivot. Then you're getting into angles and so on. If you want to talk about 90 degrees and 180 degrees or just turning around the idea that I can go right several times to put me in a left direction. So that's the fewer button option, which is a little more challenging. Um, random instructions are fun too, because they're given instructions. And this is like a reverse engineering. They give you the instructions. Let's have a look. Um, and there's levels one, two, and three for difficulty. I'll do level one. And so here is the end point and I have to place it based on the program. So it's an idea of un, um, unprogramming, right? Looking at somebody else's program, forward, forward, back, forward. So I'm gonna guess forward, forward, back, forward. I'm probably gonna end on P. And it's, should be, yeah, there you go, a drag and drop my um, flag in the correct location and see if I'm right. And I'll say go, forward, forward, back, forward, and then I'll get feedback. And again, if you have your tiles down on the floor, this is a great visual exercise and there's my feedback. Okay, you reached your goal that kind of thing. So those are the possibilities of different types of programming, different layers, different challenges from very, very simple to getting a little more complicated, a little more complex. And I'm just gonna go back because there's some other features in there, back to explore bear with me and I'll choose uh, the 45 degree turn I had mentioned. So there's extra um, buttons possible. I had mentioned that the 45 degree turn, you can see the yellow ones in there that have been added only works on the interface, but your robot will react accordingly. It'll turn 45 degrees, but you know that there's no 45 degree button on the blue bot or the B bot. If you wanna change your background, this map icon can provide that. There's the repeat loop. So if I wanna put in a command and then repeat that command, two or three steps, and I use the repeat button, and this is the pen feature. There you go. If I choose the pen feature and I'll place my robot on here. I want to go forward, forward, 45 degrees, forward, 45 degrees, forward. Let's see what that looks. Who knows? But the fun thing is when I press go, it's leaving a trail and it's tough to see in the light here, but that orange dotted line. So that in this case, if you had a pen attached to your robot, you can do this on the ground in real time while the learners are using it 
um, on the iPad. So definitely you'll have two students working at the same time. Somebody's on the iPad, somebody's controlling the, the physical B-Bot that they're, they're using that and moving it. Um, all right, so that's the interface a little bit. You guys